But what we've seen so far in recent weeks is an army of industry lobbyists from Wall Street descending on Capitol Hill to try and block basic and common sense rules of the road that would protect our economy and the American people. So if these folks want a fight, it's a fight I'm ready to have. May sound a little tougher than the actual policy itself, but expect to hear more populist rhetoric like that from the president. And if it's a fight, might there be some early casualties? Top Line starts right now. Hello and welcome to ABCnews.com's Top Line. I'm David Chalian. And I'm Rick Klein. Each weekday we're bringing you the very latest political headlines, reporting, insight, analysis, everything you need and want to know about politics. And follow along at Twitter.com slash the note where I am rocking a new background and you can stay <laughs> up to date rocking all day long. Rocking a new Twitter background. That's exactly right. Yeah, that's I said What's that. your top line? Economic splits. Ben Bernanke and Tim Geithner are on the Washington hot seat today. Tim Geithner and Ben Bernanke, of course, were part of the, the TARP program, the architects of the program, and it may not fit with the populist push that we're hearing out of the White House right now. We know that Tim Geithner was not happy with the proposal that President Obama uh, put forward yesterday, and that's when we know about those things, there's usually someone sending a message, and Ben Bernanke is seeing his opposition build on Capitol Hill. Uh, I think we're up to five Democrats now who have announced publicly that they will not support him for renomination. That has become a real problem. And some Republicans are holding him as well, so it doesn't look like they're making up with Republicans just yet. When you say when they send that message out, to me it's the same people sending the message. I mean, they wanted to send a message to Wall Street, don't worry, we still have some of your folks here as part of our team. Don't pay too much attention to this populist rhetoric. We just need to take care of our politics. It's a little tricky uh, yes. double messaging out of the White House. Road show. President Obama is out in Ohio today. He takes the jobs tour, that Main Street jobs tour he started last month, on the road to the Buckeye State. And, and this, Rick, is really about building the message frame through which he wants to step for the State of the Union speech next week. This is that uh, turn to a real front and center focus to jobs. Uh, yet his problem, of course, is that he has other things still hanging in the balance. He well, can't He can't just talk about this. Am I the only one who forgot about this Main Street jobs tour? I mean, the, the Allentown <laughs> event was like six weeks ago, and this is the event number two as part of that, going to Ohio, of course, an economically distressed place. But yeah, a lot of things have happened in the interim. Not the best campaign push. <laughs> maybe not, maybe not. Life support. Congress is out of town without a path forward on health care. Health care reform is in real trouble on Capitol Hill. The House does not have the votes to pass it, according to Nancy Pelosi. The Senate is, doesn't have the votes to pass much of anything right now. They are looking at all kinds of backup strategies, David. None of them are good. None of them are particularly good pass forward. And, and, and the, the point is, we're, we're at chaos if, in the wake of Massachusetts. And again, we're still in that place where everyone inside the White House knows that they still have to get a health care bill to his desk that he has to sign. Too many Democrats have taken votes. Rick, when you read about how it can be pared down, it is not clear to me, uh, are, are they doing away with the individual mandate? How are, It's only going to cover 15 million people. There are so many questions still to be answered here. And if you and every Democrat wants to stop talking about it. Well, that's a problem. It is indeed. The Bush brand. Yes, we have Bushes everywhere today, at least in the two states they have dominated uh, for the last couple of decades, Florida and Texas. Uh, in Texas today, you have President Bush 41 with his wife, the former First Lady Barbara Bush, coming out for Kay Bailey Hutchison, the senator running against Rick Perry in the Republican primary there. For governor, uh, that puts them, of course, on the opposite side of the aisle here in this fight from Sarah Palin in terms of star power endorsements. Uh, and in Florida, George P. Bush, the, the Jeb Bush's uh, son? No. Son. Son, yes. Uh, endorsed Marco Rubio. And I wonder if that's a little tea leaf reading there. Is this where Jeb's heart really is? And is this another blow to the Charlie Crist campaign? That's the clear message. And it's interesting to see the Bushes reemerge politically a year after President Bush leaves office with that Bush brand tarnished. Maybe it means something in Republican primaries, at least. And we begin with the 2010 landscape. We are joined by our one of our favorite sister stations up there in New Hampshire, WMUR. We're joined by Congressman Paul Hodes. He's a Democrat, and he's running for the United States Senate to replace Judd Gregg, who's retiring. Congressman Hodes, um, you are not far from the Massachusetts border, from where you sit right now in Manchester. And uh, you must have... Uh, taken some lessons out of what happened in Massachusetts on Tuesday night, because it is awfully close to where you live. What are the lessons you've taken? What have you learned? The first thing to, the first thing to remember is New Hampshire is definitely not Massachusetts and never has been. Uh, we've always had independent-minded voters in New Hampshire. I'm out every day 
fighting for jobs for our people and making sure that the people in New Hampshire and the independent-minded voters on all sides of the aisle and who are actual independents know that my priority is jobs and fiscal responsibility. Uh, so New Hampshire has had its tea parties for a long time, uh, and we're on message and we're doing the fight for the people in New Hampshire. Well, one of the things that makes New Hampshire not Massachusetts is that it's been friendlier in recent years to Republican statewide office holders. And this is a seat that uh, has been held by a Re Republican for some time now, as opposed to the Ted Kennedy seat that just flipped. And I'm wondering, you're out there talking about health care reform and, uh, and, and talking about the, the, the Democratic agenda. What, what makes this different from your perspective? After a candidate just down, the, just down state or just over the border says health care has got to go and I'm going to stand up against it, you're, you're campaigning for it. Uh, I've been very, very straightforward with the folks in New Hampshire about the importance of substantial health care reform. We've got to have lower costs, higher quality, and uh, putting the folks of New Hampshire in this country back in control of their health care instead of the health insurance companies. And health care reform is a jobs bill. Uh, and that's what I've been telling uh, the folks all over the state that I've been talking to, and they get it here. Small business is big business in New Hampshire, and small businesses in New Hampshire are getting pummeled by double-digit uh, premium costs going up every year. They can't afford it. They know we need health care reform. Uh, and I'm finding a lot of fertile ground because people get that health care reform is a jobs bill, especially for small business. Congressman, we, we see out across the country uh, a real skittishness amongst the American public into uh, government involvement and, and big government spending and big government programs right now. There seems to be a sort of anti-Washington, anti-establishment uh, fervor out there. You said earlier that you are very much for fiscal responsibility, but I believe you voted for the stimulus bill, for the cap and trade bill, and for this health care bill, all uh, big, big money from the government, big government programs. What makes you think those votes are not going to be uh, the guns and budget votes that Democrats took in 1994? What's really important is to make sure that we're investing wisely, uh, but that we're doing it in a fiscally responsible way. I voted against the Wall Street bailout. There wasn't uh, sufficient accountability. There weren't the right conditions. Sir, I want to focus uh, your attention on the three votes I, I specified. Uh, I, you could talk about the ballot in a moment, but I'm talking about cap and trade, stimulus, and health care, three bills that have proven to be unpopular right now with the American people at large. Uh, the Recovery Act was really important to make sure that we protected jobs at the state level and uh, start turning our economy around so that we'd get back on a firm footing uh, for a working economy. Uh, clean energy and energy independence, health care, education, and infrastructure investment are the way to the future. So it's important to invest wisely, and I've taken important votes to protect people's jobs and invest wisely. Um, clean energy jobs are part of the future. That's what we need. We need new jobs. That's where the middle class jobs are going to come from. Uh, so those are the right votes to protect people. When it comes to standing up to Wall Street, the folks in this country and the people in New Hampshire want to know that we're looking out for their jobs, that we're spending wisely, and that we're not going to be ruled by Wall Street. And that's the, the reason I took that vote. Uh, I'm standing up for people, for their jobs, for fiscal responsibility that makes sense for the future. On that theme, I know you don't get a vote uh, as, a, as a House member, but you would as a senator. Should Ben Bernanke be confirmed for another term at the Federal Reserve? Well, uh, I, I, I'm not going to be able to take that vote. I will tell you that there are a number of people who have uh, advanced policies uh, which have favored Wall Street. We need to pay attention to what regular people are going through. I think there's been some Is Ben Bernanke one of, those, one need, of those people, though? Well, he, you know, in the run-up, he had a really tough time. I don't think he saw what was coming, and he probably should have. Since that time, uh, some people have favored what he's done because they've said it saved us from a depression. But what we've got to do is look forward and make sure that uh, we are connected. And that's what I'm doing every day. Ooh. I want the people in New Hampshire to know that I care about their jobs and fiscal responsibility. And I think that uh, folks ought to pay a lot more attention to what are, what's going on around kitchen tables and not what's going on around the boardrooms in Wall Street. Congressman, you're running to be a United States senator. You would have to take this vote. How would you vote on Bernanke's reconf uh, reconfirmation? Would you vote yes or no? Uh, so far, I've supported uh, Mr. Bernanke. Okay. Congressman Paul Hode, Senate candidate up in New Hampshire, thank you very much for being here today, sir. And, and, and we have a guarantee from you that uh, you're going to get that band out there again during the campaign, right? Well, I'm a guitar player, and I think it's time we brought a little rock and roll to the okay. U.S. Senate. Oh, we love it. We love it. Paul Hodes. Take care, Thanks. Congressman.